Bienvenidos. Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us today as we engage in a conversation celebrating Hispanic Heritage Month. My name is Alejandro Gongora. I am the proud chief of schools here for the Maynard Independent School District, and I am joined by four amazing individuals who at this time will have an opportunity to introduce themselves. Uh, hi, my name is Alondra Carrojal Lopez. I'm a senior in Maynard Early College High School, and I'm a proud Mexican-American. Hi, I'm Valerie torres Elise. I'm the Executive Director of Curriculum, Instruction, and Assessment here with Maynard ISD. Hello, my name is Nile Garcia. I am a kindergarten bilingual teacher at Lagos Elementary. Hi, my name is Luis Roberto Alvarez de Anda. I am a senior at Maynard Early College High School, and I am a proud Latino. Well, as I can already tell that we're going to have an amazing conversation here, just based on everybody that's at the table. You know, this month we get to celebrate being Latino or Latina, and there's a lot of pieces that come with that in terms of our culture and in our identity. Family is very important to us. Our own parents, our siblings, our individuals that inspire us. And oftentimes from our family, it helps mold our identity. I know that for me, as I think about my name, uh, my name is Alejandro Gongora. I'm named after my father, whose name is Jose Alejandro Gongora. And when he immigrated from Colombia to New York, when they were working on papers, they were trying to reduce his name. They wanted to make it easier to pronounce for them, not necessarily accepting or embracing his identity as a Latino. And so for me, it's been very important as an adult to really ensure that, you know what? I want people to know I'm not going to anglicize my name Alejandro Gongora. So I would definitely love to hear from you all if y'all have a name story. So who would like to share with us a little bit about your name story? Um, basically, my name is Alondra, so it comes from my mom wanting me to be named after a bird. Because okay. <laughs> she liked the meaning of like saying that I can fly high, I will be able to fly high just like a bird does. So that's why she chose my name, since it's the name of a bird as well. Um, but the story is also like, since I was little, uh, people would not, like when I went got to school, people would not be able to pronounce my name. They would say like Alondra or Alejandra or Alandra and stuff like that. So as I was growing up, I kind of just, when they would ask what your name is, I would just say it's Alondra. I wouldn't pronounce it like Alondra. So I feel like I just kind of felt pressured to pronounce it that way. And now I realize that that's not like, I shouldn't be able to feel pressured to pronounce it that way. I very much connect with what you were stating there. Yes, and I can actually connect with the both of you. Mm -hmm. My name is Naeli. Uh, my name has an H in the middle. Um, normally you will hear Nayeli, which um, I have had that case as you, Alondra, where whenever I would introduce myself and I was like, oh, hi, my name is Naeli. They're like, what? Na, na what? Nayeli? I'm like, no, it's Naeli. Um, and also whenever somebody would see my name, uh, like let's say whenever I was in school, the roster was always Naheli because my name has an H. And I was like, no, the H is silent uh, because it is a, a Mexican name. Um, it comes from Mexican descent. And so my name is Naeli without the H in the middle that you don't really see in there. Um, I have been, I have fallen into that where I'll go, let's say, order a Starbucks drink. And they'll say, what's your name? You know, okay, what's the name for the order? And I'll say, because I'm always like so pressured or I was so pressured, I'll try to either break it down for them, not Ellie, or I'll just say Ellie, because I'm always so nervous that, oh, they're gonna ask me to repeat it, or you know, like they're not gonna understand what I'm saying. And most of the time when I say not Ellie, the name is just, wrong you know when i get it back i'm like oh they they didn't spell my name right you know it was something else but it's something that i have had to you know grow up with and i have learned to just like you said kind of sit there listen to them and i will correct them you know especially if they ask me hey what is your name i will, I will go ahead and tell them it's naeli and this is how you pronounce it this is how you spell it it's funny because starbucks is the one that gave me the name ale janeiro and i'm like <laughs> All of a sudden, I became Italian. I'm like, no, yo no soy italiano, yo soy colombiano. But nonetheless, Ms. Tias, I would love to hear from you about the importance for you of embracing bilingualism. We live in a multicultural society. However, if we follow current events, um, not everything has been put very positively as it pertains to immigrants, people who speak different languages, and not just Spanish, other languages. For you as a Latina, um, 
what has embracing bilingualism been like for you um, in your life? Bilingualism is a superpower, and I've been raised to embrace that it's a superpower. Um, my dad is from Durango, Mexico, and my um, mom is from Colorado, and so being raised in a household where Spanish was my native language and English was my native language, I learned it at the same time. And the amazingness of hearing my parents speak one, one word in English and one word in Spanish was the norm in my, in my household. So bilingualism, is always been a superpower. And I hope that we all continue to see it as a superpower because it is part of my culture. And it is just an amazing part of my culture. And I hope that all scholars see it that way and that we can all continue to see it that way because it's who we are. And I was never asked um, by my parents because we were raised to be proud of who we were, no matter what, and to hold our heads up and understanding that when we walked into a room that we should be proud to be Torreses, right? Um, so that was always a big thing in our family. So understanding that Spanish and English were my native languages, it was always embraced. And I hope to continue to show that it is a superpower and how we need to continue to embrace that it is a superpower. Wonderful. You know, one of the things that we've talked about family, we've talked about language, but y'all also brought up another theme as, as I was listening in about, I go to Mexico or I go to Colombia and or I go to El Paso and within certain circles, I speak Spanish. I go outside of that circle, school for example, and I speak English. And I'm wondering because I've encountered this where sometimes I don't fit in either circle or space. I've been to Colombia and I'm speaking Spanish because my Spanish isn't the best because all I've had is social Spanish here in the United States and it's a mixture of other influences. You know, I'm referred to as el Yankee, el gringo. Tú no eres colombiano. And then I'm here in the States and I'm with my friends and we speak English and we do things of that nature, but I'm still sort of seen as somebody who doesn't fit in because I am Latino, I do speak Spanish, and I'm proud of it. So I found myself in this weird space, and there's somebody that I met, and I wish I could remember her name, but she coined it the Enye. The space is called the Enye. You're not Latino or Latina enough. You're not Mexican or Colombian enough, or you're not American enough, so you live in this space known as an Enye. I'm curious to know if any of you have ever come across or have certain feelings like that, because for me, that was really important in terms of my identity. and feeling like I didn't fit here and I didn't fit there. Um, personally, me, I experienced them or um, I experienced it more in middle school. So in elementary, I was put into like a bilingual class. So speaking Spanish and English was accepted, but transitioning to middle school, it, I felt secluded because there was, there was no one that spoke really Spanish there. Maybe like 10 or 10 students out of like 300, let's say. Um, so I started feeling like, okay, I can't speak Spanish with no one, so I'm going to just speak English. And as the years went on, I started separating myself from speaking Spanish because I felt like, oh, um, no one's going to accept me or no one else speaks Spanish, so I can't really embrace it. But over time, I accepted the fact that it's important to embrace speaking Spanish. You know, how you said your parents are growing up uh, speaking Spanish and English is a native. Um, I believe that speaking it should like really be important and everyone should really embrace it because no matter where you come from, you shouldn't be ashamed of your identity. Absolutely. So I really feel like we need to wrap up this amazing conversation individually looking into the middle camera and saying your name and I am a proud however you want to finish it, or you can say it in Spanish, but I'll go first. My name is Alejandro Góngora, y me da mucho orgullo de ser colombiano-americano. Ms. García. Mi nombre es Naeli García, y soy una orgullosa latina. Hola, mi nombre es Luis Roberto Álvarez de Anda, y soy un orgulloso mexicano. Mi nombre es Alondra Carroja López, y soy orgullosa de ser mexicana. My name is Valerie Torres Solis, and I'm a proud Latina. I want to thank you all for joining me in this amazing roundtable discussion as we celebrate Hispanic heritage, which 
has so many amazing layers to it. I thank you all for your time, and I wish you all nothing but the best. Muchísimas gracias. gracias.